You're watching Power Nation. Today on Music City Trucks, we find a 1964 F-350 flatbed and see if we can bring it back to life. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Brandon Burt. And I'm Mark Chris. Now you've seen us do a bunch of driveway rescues over the years with our friends at rockauto.com. Well, this time we wanted to do something a little bit different. So we took our rescue van and our tow rig out to pick up something for ourselves. We're calling this project Ranwen Park. You know, the truck that's sitting in a field or behind a barn for five or 10 years. Well, it ran when it was parked there, but you don't know if it still does today. Well, that's exactly what we did with this 1964 F-350 flatbed. And here's how we got it. <laughs> Our journey begins about 30 miles south of Nashville in Columbia, Tennessee. I actually found this truck on a farm on the way home from work. And it looks like a few roosters have called it home. The guy says it hasn't run in the last six years. We like what we see, but the truck definitely has some age issues and some obvious rust problems. So this is a 64 F350, one ton, obviously, but it's a dually and it's a flatbed. The owner that we bought it from made this flatbed because it used to have a water tank on the back of it. Uh, once he bought it from the county, he ripped it all out and put this bed in here. So as we move the Rock Auto van into place, our goal here is just get it started. In a situation like this, the first thing we'll do is check all the fluids like oil, the air filter, radiator, and wiring. Now, the moment of truth. Not surprising, she didn't start. That's to be expected. We next try spraying starter fluid directly into the car. Another start attempt. not happening. So our last recourse is to take apart the carburetor right there in the field. We found the float spring was jammed, so we sprayed a lot of seafoam deep creep into the springs. Don't let that spring go, bye-bye. The last thing we want is to drop one of those small springs or screws. Then we cleaned out the old gas in the bowl and put the 57-year-old car back together and on the engine. That's the sound of success. It seems we do have a vacuum leak, so placing your hand over the intake acts as a restrictor to keep the engine running. We had to be careful to drive the truck onto our hauler because with the engine leak and no brakes whatsoever, this is trickier than it looks. Mission accomplished. So now all we have to do is haul it back to the Music City Truck Shop to make it safer and drivable. You know, there for a little bit, we thought maybe we wouldn't get it running, but I mean, who are we kidding? These old Ford straight sixes are tanks. Well, just because it's running doesn't mean it's actually roadworthy. There's a couple of things we got to check off the list because this thing's been sitting for six years, like tune up, brakes, and anything else to make sure this thing's safe for the road. All right, let's get this thing on the lift. Oh, smells good. Coming up on Music City Trucks, tear down. We're working on our Ranwin Park project, trying to get it roadworthy. It's a 64 F350 flatbed, and if there's one thing we want working on this truck, it's gonna be the brakes. Yeah, and this wasn't really a great braking system from the factory. I mean, you've got a single pot master, drum brakes all the way around on an F-350. So 
Either way, we need to go through all the breaks. It doesn't help us been sitting for six years. You ready? Yeah. Yep, raise it up. First things first, all the tires come off, including the dualies in the rear. And since our goal is to just make the truck drivable, we're gonna keep these tires. Otherwise, they'd be in the recycle bin. The axle comes out surprisingly dry. Then it takes two of us to lift this 50 plus pound rear hub off. And not uncommon on these trucks this old that have been sitting this long, we've got dirt dauber's nest on the backing plates. Brandon makes quick work of evicting our squatters, and yes, those are live bugs. The more we tear into this thing, the more critters you find. While Mark forges ahead and starts installing the rears, I'll work on the front brakes. Not too dirty. Drum brake installation calls for a special tool. I'm using drum brake spring pliers. Now, if you've never replaced shoes before, it's a good practice to do one side at a time so you always have a reference for how they go back together. There's 57 years worth of dirt, grime, and rust on this thing. So I'm using a wire brush to knock off all the flake. I'll follow that up with a good coating of CRC's brake clean to get the rest. And that's why we wear safety glasses. <laughs> we're using replacement brakes we got at rockauto.com. And like Brandon said earlier, it helps if you keep one of the old brakes intact as you install the replacements so you have a guide to work with. First things first is that retainer and spring. Sometimes those springs can be a little tricky to get in. It's a lot easier with the right tool. This is the part where you need to wear safety glasses. I have hit myself in the face multiple times with these springs. And it's not fun. One thing to make sure the springs don't come off that pedestal is crimp them down with a pair of pliers. It's always a good idea to run in the adjuster all the way. That way it's a little easier to get the spring on with new shoes. All right, now that we've got the front brakes done and Mark's got the rear brakes done, all we gotta do is get this front hub installed and then get the front shocks on that we got from Rock Auto, get this thing on the ground. With the front back together, we can lift our wheels back onto the axles. Now we can concentrate underneath the hood. With the truck back on the ground, we can now start working on what needs to be done under the hood. The main thing we saw that this truck needed was ignition components, especially anything that's been sitting for a long time. The short list would be plugs and wires. You go from there, maybe do a cap and rotor and even a coil, a truck like this being 57 years old. Surprisingly, a lot of these parts are still available and affordable at rockauto.com. They even had the rebuild kit for the carburetor, so I went ahead and got that rebuilt. Now we just need to get this stuff installed. Won't be long, we'll be on our way. The new plugs go in with a little anti-seize and get torqued in, followed by the coil and the plug wires. Next, the rebuilt carb goes back in its stock location with a couple of nuts and two lines. All right, Brandon, go ahead and run the throttle through its paces. Feel good? Yeah, I like that. All right, well, we got it all wrapped up. Getting ready to put the air cleaner on here and then we can fire this thing up. I'm gonna give her about quarter, quarter choke. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Fur's like a kitten. A 
Okay, now I'm excited about it. We gotta take this thing out. Yeah, let's have some fun. Okay. With our vacuum leaks fixed, all new brakes front and rear, and some of the engine refreshed, now it's time to have some fun. Like, how much horsepower can this thing make? Coming up on Music City Trucks. That's right, chassis dyno. Well, we've got our flatbed all up and running and we could have taken it out on the street, but we wanted to make one more stop before we did that. So we've got it here in probably the least likely spot you would expect to see this truck strapped to the chassis dyno down here in engine power. We've got Pat and Frankie gonna help us out and spin the rollers on this thing. Yeah, I didn't think I needed to see a flatbed on a dyno. You but absolutely need yeah, to see it. What I do. I've about? never seen this. This is awesome. This is a, this takes me back. This is a, a, a big whiff of nostalgia for me because I grew up with Ford trucks, right? From the 50s all the way through, you know, the 70s and 80s. And a straight six in this, you know, th these are workhorses, right? Uh, a dually with a 233. Um, you know, this is a, this is things, these, these things last forever. Uh, this is proof positive because not only does it run, we're going to see how much power it makes. Awesome. Well, let's do it. All right, here we go. I like it. Runs nice. This is so exciting. I know, it's so cool. We have tack signal? Yep, you see that? Yep. Yeah, there's all no, right. there's there's one gauge in here. Right? There's nothing else. <laughs> it's all you need. That's all you need. All right. All right. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put it in creeper gear. Ooh, the clutch, clutch is a little, a little squashy. Are the tires, are they oval? They're a little cup. They're octagonal. Everything seems good, nothing flew off it. Who's gonna be first? Well, if Mark doesn't mind, I would like to. Okay, get her, get her about uh, somewhere near green button. day ever. <laughs> Heck yeah. What'd you get? 70.81. A little bit more than you. Broke the 70 still. 70. Dang. Dude, that's awesome. See, now Mark, Mark's an old pro with the dyno. He's, he's yes. dynoed all up crazy Mustang. I'm more worried about this. from this bias yeah. ply that's Shifter. gonna <laughs> obliterate itself. All right. all right, you guys ready? Yep. yep. Am I in a good spot? That's got a heinous sound to it, doesn't it? Mm. Well, nope. it shut off so, at the top of the pull. It just shut off. Yeah. No, nope. um, right there, 77.17 horsepower. <laughs> that is that is pretty cool, though. Yeah, yeah I don't know why. It, you, you know why what I'm died. impressed with? None of the tires came apart. Yeah, no. I'm not, I'm not particularly worried about the engine because they, those are hard to kill with no oil pressure, overheating, and whatever. I was worried about something in the drive line flying out, whether it be a U joint, whether those field setting dry rotted snow tires, whatever the heck they are. I thought someone was gonna come apart, so. 
success. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a little envious because I, I love this truck. You know, when, yeah. when it first came in here, I, I'm like, yes, this is, a, this is gonna be a great project, so. Well, what we love about it, I mean, we kind of lean toward the old Ford trucks anyway. Um, we like a little bit of everything, but there's something about these trucks that's just so attractive. And this is like a clean slate. You know, it's like we could do whatever we want right. with it, but it's just cool the way it is. It yeah. is. I hope you keep the flatbed. That's, I mean, maybe not wood, but I think that just like goes with the look of the truck. It's super I, cool. I think there's actually one thing that could be improved on since look what shop you're in. Yeah. yeah. Engine wise. Well, hold on. We haven't even driven the truck. Well, we have so many I, options though. We have options if you perhaps want to upgrade that 78 horsepower, 77 horsepower, whatever this thing made. So, uh, well, let us enjoy it the way it is and let the new wear off and then we'll check back with you on right. that yeah. well, later. This would be yeah, a great this. shop truck. Yeah, yep. this is, Perfect. and it's got the look and the potential and you can go any direction you want to with it. Yeah, so. yeah. no, that'd be sweet. We'll just see where it goes, but we'll, we'll check back with you on the All end. All right, well, there's nothing yeah. on the ground. There's nothing on fire. Success. Success. All right, Good time we'll go to get work. off of here so we can get it out on the road. Coming up, we attempt to drive our F-350 into downtown Franklin. Will we make it? Well, we finally got our 64 F-350 out here on the road. Uh, this was our driveway rescue, what we call Randwin Park, that we picked up for ourselves. Yeah, and for the little that we've done to this truck, it's, it's driving pretty nice. The tires are completely out of round. But other than that, yeah, no complaints here, not yet. What was nice is we went to rockauto.com and got a bunch of little stuff that this thing needed, really just a few things to get it up and going because it had been sitting for six years. Yeah, so uh, I actually found this truck driving home. Oh yeah, in a field. Yep. And the guy was like, yeah, it was a highway truck for 40 years and then he had it from an auction and he hadn't driven it in six years. Wow. So literally went out there, got this thing running, with very minimal stuff. Right, so we got it running, brought it back to the shop, did some more stuff to it. Got it drivable. Dynoed it. Yeah. Which is the most ridiculous and awesome thing yeah. I've seen on a dyno. But it was it was good because you know this is a this is one of those vehicles that you don't expect much out of it. You know, no one's like, oh. 77 rear wheel horsepower, that's it? Are you kidding me? Yeah. There is no expectation. No. So, what you get is actually probably a little bit higher than you thought. Exactly, yeah. So there's no, no disappointment here. And I'll be honest, I mean, after bleeding the brakes, it's not bad. You can good. obviously tell it's drum brakes all the way around, but, I mean, feels good. There you go, that's how you find third. Double clutch it. So, so yeah, so I'm just watching you over there. It's like, you're like the, uh, oh, it's Professor the Marvel at the Emerald City over there. It's, <laughs> you could say it's a two-handed driving truck. The only thing you're missing is like the throttle lever, like oh. I mentioned to Pat, you know? That's the only thing that would make it more interesting. Yeah, if there wasn't enough going on in this truck, there's a reason why there's no radio. Yeah, you, you don't have an extra hand to change yeah. it. Oh, there wow. Go now. Yeah. Uh oh, oh yeah, yeah, power shift it, baby. There it is. <laughs> Practical? I mean, it's not gonna be a, a flatbed one ton anymore. Right, you know. But no, but it'd be a cool driver. It'd be the look. Plus, if we're gonna hang on to it, we could use this as our shop truck. Yeah, right. that's like that's, that's my main like in my head. That's my main vision. If, if we can use this practically as a shop truck, yeah. I mean, how it doesn't get any cooler than this. Right. Oh no. No, it's got that look. You know, it's like you look at that truck and you're like, oh, that's a farm truck or a shop truck or whatever. It's kind of like you said, a blank slate. We could just kind of do whatever we wanted to. Yeah. For this to be a, a daily, bare minimum would be an overdrive. Okay. Obviously tires, and I would lower it. To me, there's like a top 
five things a daily driver needs. Disc brakes, electronic fuel injection. That would be a nice upgrade. Would you keep it two-wheel drive? Uh, to me, it could be either. So two, I'd keep it two-wheel drive. But I'm with you on the overdrive. So yeah. electronic fuel injection, disc brakes, overdrive, climate control. What am I missing? Tires. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I think if you did all those things to this truck, it could be easily daily driven. You know, maybe do some restoration on the paint and kind of go for that. Oh, I would totally keep this paint as close to this patina as possible. So when I mentioned to Pat, you notice that when I mentioned to Pat that we may keep it, he like, hey, yeah. we, we got all these Ford engines here. He seemed as excited about it as oh, we were. If not more, which says a lot. Which, I mean, if he's got an engine to throw in this, I'm, I'm all down for it. What if we do this? What if we let him pick? <laughs> Since he loves the truck just as much as we do, yeah. we should let him pick what goes in this. That's actually a really good idea. That is. Just be like, Pat, whatever. Yeah. Just... Tell you what, we're going to go pull the engine out. And you give us something <laughs> to put back in it. And we'll figure out the rest of the driveline after that. Perfect. No, it's, this, is, this is a perfect shop truck. I love it. Yeah, we have to keep it. For more about this and our other cool truck builds, go to PowerNationTV.com.